All right, first and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom to all you sincere hearted true believers. All right, today's lesson, I want to go into a, you know, a couple of different uh, precepts, but ultimately just touching on the fact that we understand Jacob's trouble is coming, right? And this is a, a very heavy topic because we are in those days, man, right, where, where everything, you know, all of these prophecies are about to be fulfilled. And, uh, and one of the main ones being Jacob's trouble, you know, the destruction of America, Babylon, right? All, all, all hell and all chaos, you know, uh, uh, letting loose all throughout America, Babylon, you know, uh, uh, famine of bread, famine, of, all of these different things, man, right? And we've seen how the Heavenly Father, ultimately, he always, you know, protected his men and servants, his believers during these times of famine and ultimately uh, uh, delivered them, man. Right. And, and there's many different accounts and, and many different scenarios. But ultimately, the rest of these people during Jacob's trouble is going to be a very, very bad time because they walked in great pride, man. And ultimately, like that, like it says in Isaiah, the second chapter, but uh, right here in Sarek 10, uh, 10 and 12, it says uh, the beginning of pride is when one's heart uh, departed from the heavenly father and his heart is turned away from his maker. For the pride is the beginning of sin. And what's the wages of sin? Death. It says, and he that have it shall pour out abomination. And therefore, Ha'adawan brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. So that's the point. These people are going to be overthrown utterly, man. Right? The Heavenly Father is going to bring upon them many different calamities. And one being is going to be a, a great famine. And you see oftentimes throughout the scriptures when the Heavenly Father wants to, you know, uh, 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 you know, take out a lot of people, you know, like he'll, he'll bring a famine upon them or punish them. You see what I'm saying? Because that's a really bad way to go out pursuing the Lamentations, the uh, fourth chapter, which I'm going to grab that real quick for y'all. Lamentations chapter four and verse nine, it says, they that be slain with the sword, highlighted for y'all, they that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger for these pine away stricken through, uh, through for one of the fruits of the field. So it's better to be slain with the sword than it is to be slain with hunger. Why? Because your body deteriorates, your muscles deteriorate, your body starts eating itself. You start having headaches and delusions, All right? So many different things. And then ultimately after, after a long, a uh, 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 painful death, a slow death, you die. When if you was just shot in the head or your head chopped off, it would have been quick and instantaneously. You see, that's why the scriptures say that, right? And that's why the Heavenly Father is going to bring upon these people great miseries, man. A lot of great miseries. And we see that that's how, that's how the Heavenly Father is going to do that because we read that where? Second Ezra, the 16th chapter, right? Second Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, right? The beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils, what shall I do when this evil shall come, right? So the, po the point is, there's going to be great, uh, 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 the beginning of famines, right? You read this in verse 19, behold, famine and plague and tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment, right? So the heavenly father sends these things so people can consider their ways. But the scriptures tell you, evil men understand not judgment, meaning they don't understand that what's happening to them is really a result of the wicked deeds that they've been doing and the sin that they've been sowing in the earth. And ultimately, they're reaping for it. But the Heavenly Father sent those things for a minute so that way they can consider their ways and ultimately change, right, and repent. But what does it say? It says, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor, nor, nor be always mindful uh, of the scourges. So that's the point, man. So these people, even though the Heavenly Father is going to punish them, and you know what I'm saying? They, they still going to continue to wax worse and worse in their wickedness. And that's why the Heavenly Father is just going to uh, wipe them off the face of the earth, Right. And ultimately, for the remnant of our, uh, the rest of our people, the two thirds of our uh, of our nation, which I don't want to rock desire, you know, well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm no part of that. Are you are you sincere hearted, true believers? You know, as long as we continue to endure until the end, we won't. We will be of the elect. Right. So uh, and then the remnant for the sisters. Second uh, is 16 and verse 22. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine. You see, so we read this May, for many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine. And the others that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So even those who escape the hunger, they're still going to be destroyed with the sword, man. But you see, there's going to be a lot of people that die by famine, man. And this is what the Bible prophesies in 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter, which is talking about the end to come, right? The Jacob's trouble to come, right? So you see how the Heavenly Father, he's done this before. He's going to do it again, right? Because what's coming to America is something called hyperinflation. Where you have like a, um, a loaf of bread that might have cost 3 to $4, then that, then that loaf of bread that was three or four dollars is hyperinflated all the way up to fifty to one hundred dollars. Or like, like for an example, when uh, Hurricane Harvey, there was like a, um, there was a shortage on water over here in uh, Houston, Texas, and whatnot. And at these gas stations, I saw on, on, on Facebook and whatnot, they said that uh, some gas stations were selling like a pack of water for fifty dollars. Like, come on, that's hyperinflated. Why? Because it, it's a scarcity of stuff to go around, 
right? And that just shows you, like it says in the second Ezra, the sixth chapter, I believe it's the second, 22nd verse, six and 22. It says, um, and suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. What is that? These markets, these grocery stores, these targets, these Walmarts. And you see a lot of these stores are actually closing down. So you can't even. So when that time to come, you might not even be able to go, go in that store and actually find them. And, and then the ones that are, you know, still left around, you go in and they're going to be ransacked. They're going to be they're going to be uh, 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 t totally desolate. Why? Because a lot of these trucks, once all hell breaks loose, these trucks are going to start rolling in. I think these, these stores only keep like uh, three days worth of supplies and stuff like that. So you see these sudden these full storehouses are going to be suddenly found empty. And if you do find anything and it's still operating like where you can buy stuff, it's going to be at a hyperinflated price, man. Right. And, and we've seen that the heavenly father, he did this before. Second Kings chapter six and verse 24. It says, and it came to pass after this, that Ben Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. This was like the northern kingdom. And it says, and behold, they besieged it. And so it asked his head. Right. I'm going to read it in uh, NLT so you get more clarity right basically ass his head a donkey's head right so verse 25 it says as a result there was a great famine in the city the siege lasted as long so long that the donkey's head was sold for 80 pieces of silver and a cup of doves dung sold for five pieces of silver one day as the king of israel so that's a lot man are you talking about an unclean animal such as a donkey and bird poop a donkey's head ain't got much meat on it and it's an unclean animal sold for 80 pieces of silver that's a lot of silver y'all Right. A lot of silver just for 80, 80 pieces, man. Right. And, and, and a cup of a cup of a, a cup of bird poop. <laughs> That's how bad it got. Five pieces of silver. The Heavenly Father had, had our people, you know, and, and really bad uh, uh, dire straits. Why? Because, you know, you read if you read in the book of Kings, you'll see how, you know, uh, Israel, when I say Israel, the northern king, they was doing some real wicked stuff over there, man. Right. So it says um, the Heavenly Father was punishing them. Right. But uh, verse 26, and one day as the king of Israel was walking along the wall of the city, a woman called him, please help, help me, my, my lord, uh, the king. He answered me, if Adawan does not help you, what can I do? I have neither food from the threshing floor nor wine from the press to give you. But, the king, but then the king asked, what is the matter? She replied, this woman said to me, come on, let us eat your son today. Then we will eat my son tomorrow. So we cooked my son and ate, ate him. Then the next day I said to her, kill your son so we eat him. But she has hidden her son. Damn. That's 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 heavy, man. All right? And you read that in Lamentations, the um you actually read that in Lamentations, the um the fourth chapter as well. Lamentations four. Let me go ahead and get that. Lamentations chapter four, I believe it's verse 10. It says, The hands of the pitiful woman have sodden, meaning sodden boiled, right? The hands of the pitiful woman have boiled their own children, sodden their own children. They were their meat in the, in the destruction, uh, uh, in the destruction of the daughter of my people. Right. So that's the point. It says, how do have accomplished his fury? He have poured out his uh, fierce anger, have kindled a fire in Zion and have devoured the foundations there. So, yeah, the Heavenly Father does this to punish our people. And you see the, the same people are back doing the same wicked shit today and they're going to do the same thing, you know, but us who are of the household of faith. Man, we got nothing to worry about, man. The Heavenly Father is going to deliver us. And if you read this chapter as well as the next, you'll see that the Heavenly Father, he'll do many great miracles, man. I believe um, after this, uh, uh, basically, you know, Elisha came and said, uh, Elisha came, where was it at? Elisha came and basically just said that um, basically it was like an army or something like that. <clears throat> where is that at? Basically, what happened was... Um, they were able to find food and whatnot because the the, the, the enemies that were besieging Samaria, basically, they 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 uh, the heavenly Father had caused them to hear certain sounds to make them think that Israel had hired, uh, I, be, I believe, the Egyptians and, and and some other nation to come and attack them, which went which didn't happen. But they were they they were so afraid the heavenly Father put in them the spirit of fear, and they all dipped off and left all their stuff there. And then what happened? They came down right. Uh, yeah, I think this is it. The lepers, because I believe it was a group of lepers, men or something like that. They came down and then basically what happened was they got like Israel was like, oh, snaps. You know, it's all his food and goods and stuff like that. And then they went down there and they gathered all the stuff and then they was able to eat. You see, just like that. So that shows you that what the heavenly father, he does miracles like that. You know, in, in ancient times, he's going to do it like even even better in this time, man. Right. Because this is going to be a time like no other, man. 
It says no more shall uh I believe it's in the book of Jeremiah, no more shall uh shall they should they uh talk about you know uh us being delivered from ancient Egypt, but he's gonna be talking about us being delivered from this one. Even even gonna be talking about Jacob's trouble to build up. Because even our, our our deliverance from Egypt, you know, the story, the, the 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 whole good of the story is to build up to it as as well. You see what I'm saying? So the Heavenly Father is gonna protect us, man. Give us, you know, a uh, 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 beautiful spiritual power, right? He's gonna feed us. Uh, 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 us and our households, right? Like it says in Isaiah 65 and 13, Garib that for y'all. Isaiah chapter 65 and 13, it says, <clears throat> Therefore, thus saith Hadawan Yahweh, behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. My servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. All right? So the Heavenly Father, He's going to take care of us, man. He's going to have us have abundance and making sure we eat and we fed. Right? And we need to remember scriptures like these because coming into these times, we're going to need to recall certain scriptures like these. Have faith in scriptures like these and ultimately have faith that the Heavenly Father put these scriptures in here for us to read them, to believe them and actually do them and pull uh, and uh, accomplish them through us, man. Right. Meaning like manifest them through us, you know, like ha have, you know, have us, you know, uh, get spiritual power, and do certain things. Like I got this account right here in Elisha, Second uh, uh, Kings, the fourth chapter where Elisha, he actually was able to um, heal some type of poison, man, some some, some poison stew. Right, because you might have some like some berries out there, and it might be poison berries. But then the Heavenly Father could turn them to the point where they like they, they you know, they good or something like that. You know, I'm gonna I'm read it for you real quick. Isaiah, it was in Second Kings, the fourth chapter, and I'm gonna start at verse 38. Check this out, because this is spiritual power, man. Second Kings chapter four, verse 38. And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a, a, a dirt in the land, and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said unto his servants. Sit on the great pot and see a pot is for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine. Right. So it's probably some grapes. Right. And gathered thereof while gourds his lap full. And it came shred them into the pot of the pottage for they knew them not. They didn't know what they was. They just gathered them. Right. So they poured out. Uh, uh, they poured out the, the men to eat. And it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said, oh, thou man of God, there is death in the pot. Right. Meaning it was like some some poison in the pot and they could not eat thereof. But he said, then bring bring meal. And he, and he cast it into the pot and he said, uh, basically, I think it was like flour or something like that. That's what it said in the NLT. And he cast it into the pot and he said, pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. Dang. You see that? So first off, like they, they, they put like poisonous berries and stuff like that because they didn't even know what it was into the pot. And then what happened is, you know, they said, oh, snaps, this is poisonous. And they went to Alicia. Alicia threw some flour in there. You know, of course, it was through the spirit, right? Because don't be just throwing flour thinking that it's going to, you know, heal some poison, yo. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, you know, the Heavenly Father was working with uh, Alicia, put some flour in there, and, and, you know, through the spirit, and then it made that, that poisonous pot to be, you know, uh, uh, edible, man, and, and, and was able to uh, feed the people. So you're going to have many different miracles happen in these times, man. It's going to be so many different miracles, and this is a beautiful thing. These are the things that we have to look forward to as long as we continue to be obedient to the Heavenly Father, man. All right, this is going to be a beautiful, beautiful thing. So, you know, uh, this is what we have coming. This is what is coming to America Babylon. You know, we ought not to fear and fret because ultimately the Heavenly Father, you know, as long as we're uh, serving him he, in, in, in all truth and sincerity, he's going to be with us, man. So uh, I don't want to desire you sincere, hearted, true believers, were edified, exhorted, and comforted with this message. And I just want to say shalom.